I think speed is really important and I think people tend to focus, it's easy to go for a long run and people don't make the time maybe to, to, to think about sprinting. So I would, I, I, it wouldn't do any, any harm to just maybe do some repetition runs just to get your body running a bit faster. Yeah, basically you need to concentrate on doing something that's quicker than race pace as well as the, the recovery running that's slower than race pace and also work on your core stability because by keeping your core strong that's what keeps the rest of your body strong, particularly towards the end of a marathon when everything's tiring. If you can have a strong core, it keeps everything holding together and keeps your form. I hate speed sessions. <laughs> I dread them to the point that they actually make me feel quite sick beforehand but afterwards I'm glad I've done it. It's out of the way and I know that I've worked hard and I know it's going to give me some benefit. But if you're fairly new to running later in life, you've still got time on your side to be able to still increase that speed. Um, I think the idea is really you've got to listen to your body a lot more, you've got to allow your body to recover a little bit more, still do the speed sessions, still try and compete with people in your own category who are quick. That'll help inspire you and motivate you to try and maintain that speed. What I did, and listen, I'm not, a, I'm not an expert, but when I wanted to, I, I had this thing about breaking three hours in a marathon, and what I did is you just add a little bit of, a little bit at the start of running faster than your race pace in your training. So even if it's to the next tree or to the next street corner, just run as fast as you can, and then jog to recover, and then do that a few times. And actually what you'll find is the run, especially if it's one of those difficult runs when your legs aren't responding or you're just not really in the mood for it, the run will go quicker because you're thinking about, oh, this is a nice bit because I'm not going fast or this is a bit where I'm going to go fast until that tree. So it sort of keeps you entertained and, like by stealth, gets you quicker. Speed-wise, I'm not always that great at fitting speed sessions in. You know, I don't, I don't train on a track. I just, for building up to my best time, I just literally set my watch to however many, you know, reps I wanted to do for whatever distance. So that bleeper was my, like, personal trainer, if you like, and, and you know, my signal to, yep, yeah, OK, you've done one more, you've done one more, and then you knew at that last bleep you'd finished it. And I'm really glad I did it because I now know it made a huge difference. If you want to become a faster runner, you really cannot ignore nutrition. The most important thing to remember is to refuel after each of your runs because that's when your muscles become stronger, that's when they adapt to the running. I would probably have a pad thai with noodles, with lots of colourful vegetables and I would in include either tofu, I would in include beans. I also like lots of chickpea dishes because you've got the protein, you've got all the phytonutrients, so these are the plant nutrients that do have health properties in the body that will help to make you healthier, that will raise your energy levels, help to stave off illness. Of course I was a racing driver so yeah there's lots of similarities with how your mindset should be and the discipline and the resilience to really testing yourself. I mean, it's, you know, there's a lot of throwaway lines, obviously, of digging deep and, you know, staying, hanging tough and all those type of things. But, you know, focus on your form, just trying to keep your breathing going, you know, do the really, all the small things really well. Um, of course, you can try and play some tricks on your mind and try and distract yourself a little bit away from maybe the misery, misery that you're just in, whether you've got maybe even a, re a really brutal stitch or you've got some other things going on which are, uh, you haven't foreseen that might be in that part of the race. So, yeah, just, Pull it all back, stay positive in your mind if you can, don't get bogged down and get in a spiral of a negative mindset and just keep moving. You need to have a compelling why. And for most people here, that's, well for a lot of people here, that, that'll be, I'm raising money for charity, I want to do my first marathon, I want to run a personal best, I want to you know, run with my group, I don't want to let them down. Find that reason, because that's what will get you through the hard times. If, you have, if you're just doing it, you don't know why you're doing it yet or I want to lose a certain amount of weight, you know, have a compelling reason. And when you reach those moments where you just want to stop, you'll keep going. I'm running from Perth to Sydney, uh, which is approximately 4,000 kilometers, and I'm trying to be the fastest woman to do it. Um, I've got two things, two, two major whys. One is the charity that I'm raising money for, which is the 401 Foundation. And the second one is that it's, it's my personal goal. And um, at 52, I want to prove that I can do this to my, uh, for myself, to myself. Um, and so that's really, really important to me. It's the thing that actually keeps me going all the time. So if I know my whys, then I will get up and I'll, I'll put myself through that, that tough training session because, you know, I can honestly say, it's not my friend. <laughs> I don't really like speed work, but I'm gonna find a way to um, fall in love with it.
where I've improved my speed in past years, I might add, because my speed's going down as I've got older, but I would say you've got to run with people who are faster than you. If you don't run with people faster than you, you tend to sit in your comfort zone a lot more. You are capable of running quicker than you probably think you are, but you won't know that until you start running with people who are faster. That is what's going to improve your speed. Outs outside of that, we're talking speed sessions, interval sessions, tempo runs, all the things that you see in training. But again, if you do those sessions with others, you find there's a little bit more competition there and you can eke out those extra ounces of uh, effort and they make all the difference. If you're putting in the miles, you're putting in those hard workouts, actually snacking is a really important part of a runner's preparation. So when we're talking about snacking, we're not talking about crisps and foods out of packets. Making our own is probably the way to go. So dried fruit and nuts and oats, I like to put them all together to make energy bars, energy balls, you can make them whatever shape you like but you are therefore getting a better range of nutrients in, in a better form. You don't need to buy all of these manufactured gels and bars, which are of course fine and they will suit a lot of people. When I talk to a lot of beginners, one thing they don't sometimes do is run at different paces. And I think, you know, rather than just going out for a run, it's really important to introduce some interval sessions into your running. But obviously it has to be done gradually. You know, if you're new to running, you don't want to suddenly start running fast every day. So, you know, maybe just try and do a warm up, maybe do something like six times three minutes with one or two minutes recovery in between. Or even just some fart leg training, some multi-place training where you run a bit hard and then jog a bit and set yourself markers along the way but I think you need to be running at all paces so that you then when you enter a race you're actually finding that race pace a little bit easier but there's so many ways that you could actually think about improving your running you know strength and conditioning um, hill sessions but you mustn't introduce everything at once you need to really take your time and introduce things gradually so that you don't have the risk of injury build up really slowly don't worry about your speed because actually you've got to get a good solid base before you even can get to that stage so it's nice and steady go out and enjoy it go out with a friend have a conversation while you're running running and walking and then eventually once you've got to your your goal you can then introduce some speed work but it's all about getting a good solid base and talk to other people who've done it as well our community is brilliant because it's got so many levels of runners there's so much information about what's worked for other people so just talk and connect and, and find out from people the more experienced people the session i would advise people do the most is to get onto the hills and do hill reps they for me give you they help build your strength and stamina and that is the foundation really before you even go into speed and so if you can make that your sort of groundwork if you like that's what's going to make you a much stronger runner you might only want to do three the first time and then the, and then you might do that once a week and then you gradually add another rep you might go a little bit quicker but over the weeks you'll find yourself getting stronger you'll go up that hill a little bit quicker you'll be recovering faster and you'll feel stronger going up i pick a fairly steep hill for my reps it's about a third of a mile long i know when i get to the top that i've had to work really hard i'm really really out of breath by the time i get to the top the important thing about going up the hill is to try and keep your form don't be ragged so good high knee lift try and use your glutes try and focus on um, firing up your glutes, your glutes do a lot of the work um, and then just try and maintain that form at a constant pace to the top. It's great to run up to halfway fast, no good if you're then on your haunches out of breath halfway up, you've got to try and time it so you get to the top, knowing that you've given the maximum amount of effort to get to the top and then jog back down as you recovery and then do it again. The golden rules really for recovering after a hard session would be your protein, your carbs and of course your fluid. So my, my personal favourites would be so a banana with some nuts, it's really quick, um, very portable, very convenient and easy to take with you. Um, that way you're getting your carbs, you're getting your protein and of course having fluid is important after any run so water is definitely my drink of choice. Another really good way to ensure that you're getting the protein, the carbs and the fluid is to make your own shake. So you don't need to go out and buy anything. You can make your own from milk or yogurt, combine that with bananas, any kind of fruit. It can be mangoes, it can be pineapples, it can be berries. 
You can add in a small amount of nuts or seeds just to create a more nutritious string. But if you can spend a little bit of time preparing that beforehand, again, you've got a quick and easy, but a highly nutritious snack ready for you after that fast session. All runners want to improve their performance. And sometimes you can improve your performance from, from, from the strangest of ways. You know, sort out your nutrition, have better shoes, whatever. So if you come here, you can walk around, you can talk to loads of different people, you can get advice, and then hopefully it'll make your, your running a bit easier and a bit better.